Unlike other parts of the world, where the rise of bronze culture can be seen in the development of weapons and tools for practical use, the bronze culture of ancient China was centered on religious activities. In their governing of the country, and for that purpose, the rulers of the Western Zhou Dynasty during the 11th century BC devised rigid rules about the use of these ritual bronze objects. In the process, two abstract concepts emerged, Li and Yue. While Li translates into English as behavior code and social etiquette, the term Li implied much more than this phrase suggests, and Yue, which translates as music, covered a wider range than suggested by the word music. A strong belief in Li and Yue distinguished ancient Chinese civilization from any other in the world, and the social norms and protocols that were born out of them were passed down through history to be followed by later generations, even to the present day. More than 2,000 years ago, some Han Dynasty scholars said, China is a nation of virtues and social etiquette. To some extent, the concept of Li covers every aspect of Chinese society, including politics, history and culture, and there is no equivalent term in any Western language. Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-
啊，带有很重要的啊这个信仰的意义。所以这些方面，我们都看到这个礼仪的发展在当时啊，不但是萌芽，而且已经到了一定的这个高度了啊。那么，一直为这个商周时期的高度发展的礼仪制度呢啊，打下一个很好的基础。Cultural features of the Yellow River and Yangtze River areas can be seen in the Taosu relics. Among them are sets of large objects for use at funeral and religious ceremonies. The tuo drum and stone qing, both of which are musical percussion instruments, were once hung up in a hall. Like ceremonial wine and food containers, they were used only at worship ceremonies. As was the case with worship ceremonies in ancient China, there were strict rules for the use of Li and Yue objects. In October 2000, archaeologists made their way to the site of the Changzi Shan relics in Chufeng, Inner Mongolia. To contemporary people, this large site with its many stone and earthen enclosures seems quite eerie. Astonishingly, in the ancient past, the central area of this site covered 6.6 thousand square meters. At first, experts felt that the site may have been built for military defense purposes, but if so, who had built it and from whom were they defending themselves? Perhaps some large-scale war had taken place here. Further investigation of the site revealed that the enclosures which contain only piles of rocks had not been built for people to live in. Had this place called by the locals the ancient castle been a place of worship for some ancient kingdom in China's north? From the ground and without the aid of explanations from the local people, the site seems to consist of nothing more than piles of rocks. However, a view from the air reveals something else entirely. The rocks form a huge pattern comprising several hundred geometric shapes. The site is, in fact, the largest of all religious sites thus far found in China. Although it is just one of ten similar sites found in Changzi Shan, this one has the most altars. This religious site was in use some 4,000 years ago, about the same time as the Xia dynasty. During the Shang and Zhou dynasties that followed the Xia, humanistic thinking began to appear, and the concepts of Li and Yue began to govern political and social behavior. When King Wu of Zhou, a ruler in China's west, engaged in a punitive expedition against King Zhou of the Shang dynasty, he proclaimed three charges against the latter. Disregard of the codes of behavior instituted by the ancestors, disrespect of heaven and the gods, and cruelty to the people. All three charges made against King Zhou of Shang represent transgressions against the concepts of Li and Yue. Nemetisang 
。那么我们说甲骨里可以知道，他是不问苍生问鬼神，什么事情都要占卜。这个物质文化的发达，如果没有人文精神的引领，最后这个社会要走向灭亡。The punitive expedition authorized by King Wu received considerable support from many of the local rulers. Holding high the banner of respecting heaven and protecting the populace, King Wu's army set off from the capital of Gaojing and quickly pushed forward to the Shang capital. One of the significant academic results of the early 21st century was the establishment of the exact year of King Wu's punitive expedition. Fortunately, the year was included in an inscription on a huge bronze drum that had been specially made to commemorate the success of the mission. After the area was rid of the old ruler, in the new and relatively united country, the people began leading a happy life, while the notion of respecting heaven and the ancestors and protecting the populace took root in the way the nation was governed. Ah, you, for example, ah, he has mentioned that "wood and water belong to the people." 就是你这个执政的这个贵族，啊，你不要拿这个水啊当镜子，大家知道这个剑嘛，对吧？以史为鉴，以铜为鉴，你要拿老百姓当镜子，以民为鉴，啊，这就是以民为本啊。另外说，天事，这电视的事，天事自我，民事，老天他看到什么，就是我们人民看到什么，老天就看到什么，天听自我，民听。这样一种精神，在两千多年前这个中国出现，我觉得非常伟大。因为在这个时候，古希腊还处在神话时代。The question became how to go about effectively governing a state that was much larger than theirs had been, much larger even than the old state of Shang they had overthrown. The rulers of the Western Zhou Dynasty came up with an ingenious idea. Establishing a system of fiefdoms. In the early years of the Western Zhou Dynasty, the ruler created more than 70 fief states, 50 of which were ruled by people who had Ji as their surname, all from his own clan. It marked, in fact, the birth of a nation made up of various ethnic groups, in which the Cathay people formed the majority. But with so many fief states, some of them quite distant, how could the country be properly developed? The younger brother of King Wu, Lord Dan of Zhou, came up with a set of rules to cover almost every aspect of the nation, social, religious, political and economic. Zhou Gong is a very important political leader. 那么他在这个武王克商之后就总结，啊，这个殷人王国的教训，就他这个车怎么翻了，他前车之鉴是什么？啊，那么他经过总结呢，就发现主要的、根本的原因，就是他们呢，呃，失德。那么失德就失人心，失人心就亡天下。所以他后来周公就要制定一系列。以道德作为核心的这个制度，那么我们历史上把这样一套制度，啊，叫做治理卓越。The code built around Li and Yue was developed to the point where it could be seen in every activity engaged in by the people, whether it be funerals, burials, social activities, wars, or celebrations. The nature of this Li and Yue system meant that it reminded people that they belonged to a particular social stratum. And that they had a code to live by. Ah, 那么这个道德呢，一般来说它是一个很抽象的，啊，看不见摸不着的东西。可是我们这个前辈很聪明，他把这个。德这个东西，它分解成了很多个德目，每一个德目都是可以操作的，啊，比方诚信啊，啊
啊，孝顺啊，啊，那么你在实践这个礼的过程当中，你就一步一步的啊，成为了一个理性的人，从行为上、言谈举止上来规范，来规范你。所以这个礼啊，它是修身的，是吧？比方见到老年人应该怎么样，见到长辈应该怎么样，是吧？见到老师应该怎么样？然后在人家家里出现不幸的事情，比方丧礼，你应该怎么样？啊，那么使你呢，这个始终能够想到，啊，自己的行为应该是理性的事。After the Shang Dynasty fell to the Zhou Dynasty, the new dynasty had two small states on its borders: one named Yu, the other Rui. The land between these two small states was very fertile, and they had long been locked in a battle over ownership of this tract of land, resulting, of course, in a massive waste of manpower and resources. One day, the rulers of both states came to the capital of Zhou in the hope of settling the dispute by gaining a judgment from King Wen, the ruler of Zhou. Jung 啊，说我们在那里吵来吵去，要争抢的东西，恰恰人家认为是可耻的东西，啊，我们赶紧不要去找文王了，啊，这丢人了，啊，我们还是回去自己解决吧，啊，结果他们回去以后，啊，就互谅互让，把这个问题呢化解。To distinguish the difference between the various classes, different sets of bronze objects were used at banquets, celebrations, and at worship and funeral ceremonies. In any bronze set used for these purposes, the numbers of ding, a vessel for containing meat, and gui, a container for foods other than meat, were rigidly set according to class, and they were never to be confused. This rule about the numbers of vessels lay at the core of the rituals of the Western Zhou dynasty. 这个礼乐制度很重要的一点，它它是要体现社会的呃层次的结构。是吧？呃，你比方说啊，我们说的这个，你比方说，现在大家都说列鼎，是吧？说是这个用鼎的时候，这鼎本来就是一个吃饭的工具，是吧？特别是一种烹煮的一种器物，是吧？那它炖肉、煮肉，是吧？那么这样的器物呢？可是啊，你比方说，天子就要用九鼎啊，甚至加上三个陪鼎，所谓天子要用十二鼎，是吧？那么天子为什么要用十二鼎呢？是吧？他是不是能吃那么多？他也吃不了那么多，是吧？他是表现的他这个社会社会地位。It was not only the number of ding that marked the status of the owner, it was also the size. Through the bronze objects he used, an owner's social status, obligation and rights were clearly defined in an unequal society. But how was harmony and peace to be maintained in such an unequal society? The answer was through music. The rulers of this age believed that the function of music was to educate people. If the ruler and his subjects could sit down inside a temple to enjoy music together, the result would be a harmonious relationship between all of them. If a father and sons did the same at home, the family would be a good one. 
If all the members of a clan were willing to gather inside their village to listen to music, there would be no disputes. The music used in temples later gave rise to palace music, which was, of course, enjoyed by the ruler and his nobles only. Confucius, who was of a later generation, came to regard Zhou palace music as something that had come from heaven. On one occasion after listening to it, he said that one could forget the taste of the most delicious meat. In effect, Zhou dynasty rulers aimed to use music concerts to maintain social order through arousing in everyone feelings of harmony, peace and love. We have a very important thing to Chinese civilization was unique in its use of this system of Li and Yue, a system that was known to all Zhou dynasty people. The ancestors of the Zhou people, whose tribe was called Cathay, lived on the Yellow Plateau in China's west. Around the 12th century BC, their leader, Dan, led his people to the foot of Mount Qishan. And there, between present-day Fufeng and Qishan counties in Shanxi province, they built a town which became their capital. That town was located at a place now named Zhou Yuan, which means the source of the Zhou people. Many bronze objects have been unearthed in Zhou Yuan to provide tangible evidence of the history of the Zhou people. In December 1976, Bai Xin'en, a farmer from Zhuangbai village, was leveling his field when suddenly he spotted some unusual objects. As soon as they heard of the farmer's finds, archaeologists from Zhou Yuan rushed to the scene. As they carefully removed the earth, they realized they were uncovering layer after layer of neatly stacked bronze objects. In a single pit no more than two meters wide, the archaeologists found no less than 103 items and this discovery was named the Zhuangbai Number no. One Discovery. These bronze objects had belonged to a family of aristocrats named Wei that had been prominent during the Zhou Dynasty. From the inscriptions found on 74 of the pieces, the archaeologists determined that eight workers had been involved in making them, and that work on them had begun in the early years of the Western Zhou and had continued for 200 years before they were finally completed. One of the objects bears 284 characters about a number of important events that took place in the early years of the Western Zhou dynasty. Yi The characters on these objects reveal that the Wei family was large and wealthy. Every day, for example, they had their meals to the accompaniment of music produced from bronze musical instruments. We know that there were many such noble families in Zhou Yuan. The bronze objects from the Zhuangbai No. 1 discovery had once been in a temple where they were used only on significant occasions, 
such as ceremonies to memorialize ancestors. The people of Zhou clearly had an awesome respect for their ancestors. All members of the royal family, as well as nobles, had a family temple for memorializing ancestors. But what did such a temple look like? In 1976, a major archaeological excavation carried out in Feng Chu village, Qi Shan County, Shanxi province, brought to light the remains of a 3,100 year old building complex. This building complex was built along a central axis and occupied an area of around 1,470 square meters. Each of the 30 or so houses had three courtyards, with rooms laid out in a very orderly manner on the eastern and western sides. The builders of these houses made use of specialized tools to achieve accurate horizontal and vertical lines. A pole was erected and a thread with a weight attached to its end was used to check if every line was straight. Then, using the pole as the central point, the builders checked if the circular shape was perfect by comparing shadows at sunrise and sunset. The line connecting the two points formed a straight east-west line. Before the invention of the compass, Ancient Chinese workers determined direction through the shadow from a pole and horizontal level using water. This later led to the birth of a more accurate leveling instrument that we still find highly convenient today. According to archaeologists, these houses were part of a temple complex where major ceremonies were held. The earliest poetry book ever written in Chinese history, the Book of Songs, includes many descriptions of these ceremonies, and through them we learn that, to the accompaniment of musical instruments, Zhou people sang loudly to eulogize their ancestors. of Shang had engaged in human sacrifice, but the Zhou people turned to domestic animals for sacrificial purposes. Ancestor worship had been a very important part of life since the Xia dynasty, and it had continued through Shang. But during the Zhou dynasty, ancestor worship ceremonies became even more frequent. These worship ceremonies served as a means to unite the people around the rulers.中华民族的这种发展啊是具有重要的意义或者对中华民族的凝聚都具有重要的意义。In point of fact, the temple discovered in Feng Chu was just a very small part of the Zhou royal buildings. The remains of a much larger building complex have been found in Zhou Yuan, constructed on a high standing base. On either side of the base, there was a road paved with slab stones, on which stood huge pillars spaced out in a very orderly manner. At the site, many broken tiles were found scattered about. According to historical records, 
Tiles first appeared during the Xia dynasty a long time before the Zhou dynasty. But by the time of the Zhou dynasty, tile making technology had matured, and this can be seen in the great variety of tiles produced in the Zhou dynasty. Some of these tiles were for roofs, others for decoration, and some bore patterns. Tiles went on to be very important to the development of traditional Chinese buildings. Interestingly, the tiles used for Ming and Qing palaces glazed or unglazed are little different in appearance from those used in the Zhou dynasty more than 3,000 years before. Zhou dynasty buildings embodied Li and Yue, the concepts that rigidly prescribed what a particular social class could and could not do. This rigid code was followed all the way down to the Ming and Qing dynasties, and can even be seen in the construction of the Forbidden City. But why did these two late dynasties still operate according to this ancient code several thousand years after it was developed? Lee Although the capital of the Western Zhou was in Fenghao, Zhou Yuan was also an important place because it was the old hometown of the ancestors of the Zhou people and also the former capital. In Zhou Yuan, there were many family temples and former royal palaces where the king held fairly regular worship ceremonies and received ministers and nobles. Every time a prince or a noble received an honor, a bronze object was made to commemorate the occasion. This was a practice not limited to Zhou Yuan, but seen in other parts of the country as well. This identity and consistency meant a universal acceptance of the Zhou dynasty cultural, political and ideological beliefs and bronze objects with a vehicle used to spread them. The stories of legendary figures of ancient antiquity such as Wang Di, Yao, Shun and Da Yu were adapted into musical performances to be staged at the highest level worship ceremonies. Among these special music dramas were the story of King Wu's punitive expedition against the cruel King Zhou of the Shang dynasty and the story of the ancestors of Shang who brought about the downfall of the earlier Xia dynasty. During the Xia, Shang and Zhou dynasties, the multiple cultures of the Neolithic age merged to become the core of Chinese culture. In the inscriptions found on some Western Zhou bronze objects, the word for China appears. This tells us that the political and cultural connotations of the word were accepted, and gradually it came to be accepted in all parts of the country. Nasum 
，就是说夏商周的礼是相互继承的。那么每一个朝代更换以后，可能对礼呢多少有点、有点、有点改变，有点、有点修改，有点增加。这是有个传统的，这个中国的礼是有传统的，而这个礼表现在物质上呢，就是礼器。李希的大部分呢是集中在青铜器上。The integration of Li and Yu elevated music to a higher level, so it could function not only in social life, but also in political, military, and educational fields. Along with bronze objects such as the Ding and containers of other kinds, also found were bells used for musical performances. If the ding was the soul of Western Zhou ceremonies, these bronze bells made it flesh and blood. According to historical records, during the Western Zhou dynasty, there were more than 70 types of musical instruments. Music was a part of life, and all nobles and scholars valued the ability to appreciate music. In the royal court, there was an official in charge of musical education, whose task it was to elevate the ability of aristocrats and scholars through music. The ruler hoped to make all of his subjects calm and peaceful, respectful to parents, and loyal to brothers and sisters through music. According to the ancient book Rituals of Zhou, 1,463 professional musicians worked for the royal family, and this number excluded the musicians hired from outside the court for special occasions. So far, no images of a music ensemble working for Western Zhou rulers have been found. However, an accidental discovery made in Sui Shan County, Hubei Province, in the spring of 1978, gives us some insight as to just how magnificent such an ensemble must have been. After the earth and the massive cover was removed from the top of the tomb of Lord Yi, the ruler of the state of Zhang. A magnificent set of bronze chime bells was revealed. Among the 7,000 bronze items discovered, as many as 125 were music-related. It was the greatest archaeological discovery of the 20th century related to music. The set, made up of 65 pieces in all, was more than 2,400 years old when it was found. Yet it was still hanging on its wooden frame, in readiness for a performance. The largest of the 65 bells weighs over 200 kilograms. The lightest, 2.4 kilograms. The entire set weighs more than 2.5 tons. Each bell bears an inscription, and in all, there are 2,800 characters. They tell of the high level achieved in music during the time of the Western Zhou Dynasty. This extraordinary set of bells, the only ancient musical instrument ever found anywhere in the world capable of producing its original sound, was also the earliest instrument to produce twelve semitones and five octaves. In Europe, such a feat was only achieved with the advent of the piano, but that was 2,300 years after the set was made.
A special bell placed at the center of the set was found to be different from the others, and the inscription on the bell tells us about its source. The bell was a gift for Lord E from King Hui of the state of Chu for Lord E and his descendants to enjoy forever. This bell from King Wei of Chu is more than 90 centimeters tall and weighs about 135 kilograms. Yet compared with other bells, it's not particularly impressive in size. But then the relative size of the state of Zhang ruled over by Lord Di needs to be borne in mind. Compared with its large and powerful neighbor, the state of Chu, the state of Zhang was very small. But if the life of the ruler of Zhang was this luxurious, how luxurious was the life of the ruler of the much larger state of Chu? In the palace of every state during the spring and autumn and warring states periods, a sizable music ensemble and a performance troupe were always ready on hand to perform at a moment's notice. Towards the late Western Zhou, due to social turbulence, many musicians left the royal music ensembles. And when they did, they took with them pieces of music that had previously been performed exclusively for royals and nobles. This royal music gradually became integrated with the music of society at large, and it continued in its function to educate. 中国的这个礼乐制度很重要的一点 After the concept of Li and Yu was established during the Zhou dynasty, it quickly became the criterion for any social activity. It was a system that maintained social order, contributed to the stability of the 800-year-long Zhou dynasty, and laid a solid foundation for the cafe culture that would be established later in the Qin and Han dynasties. During the 2000 years that followed, the system of Li and Yu never ceased to function. It continued to play an important part in Chinese history. The concept of Li and Yu became the foundation of Confucianism, in which people are encouraged to cultivate themselves while the government consolidates its power. It was also meant to build harmonious human relationships and was the number one criterion for judging any activity. With the passing of time, many trends have come and gone, but belief in Li and Yu has remained throughout Chinese history.